Okay. So today's been an interesting day. Yesterday was phenomenal. Today's been like up and down again. But I actually find we're getting more to the better days than the worst days, which is great. I think that's actually really good news. Okay, so we are going to do video number six for Dimension Six of Bulimia. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can color. So, I, uh. Color, color book. Use your coloring book. My son's home with me today. So, we're doing the video. And that's another thing, too, is I am going to openly talk about how I feel having a son and doing this type of thing. So, a lot of people would possibly not agree with me and not agree with the decision I'm making. And that's fine. I, um, I... The reason I'm so strongly opinionated on this is because I have witnessed millions and millions of women decide not to do something because of their children or because of what society's opinions would be based on how, how they have their children. I don't even believe, I don't even think it would be possible for humans to evolve if someone didn't go against the grain and try something new. and. Obviously, I'm not into uh, human experimenting, so I figure no one better to do it than me. You know, like, if I'm willing to put myself out there, then I'm willing to, you know, give it a, give it a go. So, I, um, I have put myself through hell and back, literally, literally, and, um, I... <laughs> I um you know I I was not raised being told like I'm making someone proud. So and I make myself proud with the things that I decide to do. I do things that make me proud of myself and it is the most rewarding feeling ever. There's nothing more rewarding than that. And yeah, so the I will talk a little bit this video. Um I was actually going to talk about um couple other things there's something I wanted to finish off from the last video but there's two primary things I want to talk about video this video so I'm probably gonna stick with them one is since my son's home I would like to talk about um, bulimia and having kids or even any kind of eating disorder really because um, you know I, I grew up in a household I consider uh, obesity either like, either equally as eating disorderish as bulimia or equally as not disorderish as bulimia either way one or the other i think they're pretty much on the same table scale in terms of it's um just overall an addiction to your body in some form or another and with that being said um i grew up in a house where I I actually think my mom might have been healthy when I was younger. I think she was uh, more controlled in her eating at that point. But um, I had no filter in terms of what I could eat. I pretty much was able to eat whatever I wanted. And I don't remember much of the early years, but I remember certain specific times of when I would eat a lot of food, an abnormal amount of food for someone my age. I mean, I could, I remember um, like being like 12 and like a bowl of rice like this big and I would eat the whole thing. And that's, that's not, that wasn't unnormal for me. Like I, I, that was the type of the masses of food that I would eat. I mean, like I said before, I was 325 pounds by the time I was 15. Like I ate a lot of food. Um, that being said, I, we had one girl, like I, there's no real proof behind any of this, 
because a lot of what I'm about to tell you are things that my mom told me I was too young to really understand so um, well what we used to do my parents would take in once in a while like not so much foster child but it was almost like housing for younger adults so if you were like 17 or 18 and you had no place to live or you were going through a transition in your life um, these girls could come and stay with you for like it's few weeks or so it's nothing permanent nothing long term just if they're going through a transition they could it's kind of like a housing situation so a few girls would come and uh, there was one girl in particular that stayed with us for about a month or two and it was after she had left my mom had informed me that she was bulimic and I had no clue what that meant like I I don't know what that meant at all like I don't even think I looked at like I I don't even know if we had internet at the time like I just I didn't know what it meant and but the words stuck with me after that we had another girl come and live with us her name was also Nicole and I don't think she had any eating disorders but she ate much differently than my family she was very tiny she was tall and thin um, quiet and did not have much of an appetite whatsoever so I am um, it's kind of interesting because my food intake didn't really change until I moved out of the area we were in we were in a poor neighborhood so when we moved to a richer neighborhood, Nicole actually moved with us. Um, she was the one that stuck around the longest. She was with us for actually a few years and kind of like a big sister to me a little bit. And she moved with us, but it was shortly after that we had all moved out that she met someone she was with, uh, like a guy up there and ended up moving in with him. So my appetite ended up changing at that point in time and I think so did my mom's a little bit um, I just feel like it was almost like a growing up amount of weight that my mom would have put it on like it's not like some people just seem to gain a normal amount of weight at some point in their life it was kind of like that with my mom and but me for some reason everything changed for me my environment changed and I was around I started getting much more interested in boys and I started becoming more serious about wanting to like sort of get my life together because I was developing more crushes on guys that I was going to school with and um, yeah so I ended up um, losing a lot of weight at that point but that was in a different way so that was the point where I would stop eating so I wasn't exposed to eating disorders like this now I don't know many people who were with the exception of one person and that one person has very strong opinions on uh, what I'm doing and is very against um, the the concept of bulimia in itself and her experience was much more tragic I'd say and much more um, mentally um, painful than mine so with that being said I am thinking out loud and saying I my guess would probably be if bulimia wasn't such a hidden thing back then if it wasn't so like hush hush and you there was able to have more healthy boundaries and more healthy data and more of a healthy outlook on it I think that experience may have possibly been different um, you know, when you live your entire life holding a secret for yourself is one thing, but living your entire life having to hold a secret for somebody else is totally different. And I don't want my son to ever feel like he has to hold secrets for me. I don't want him to ever, I mean, 
I made the decision, I think, while I was pregnant, maybe before I was pregnant, that I am not going to change who I am as a person deep down, as a female, as a woman, what I love, what I don't love. I'll, I, I'm embracing the fact of being a mom, but I refuse to change who I am as an overall being. Like, I wouldn't do that for no God, no man, and no child. It's just, it is a self-preser, it's not even a self-preservation, it's, it's an undying love for yourself. And it's not conceited, it's not anything other than just, you have to respect yourself as being a whole individual regardless of anything else around you, surrounding you in any way, shape, or form. And I made the decision to do that, which ultimately made me made the decision to say, like, no matter what, I'm not going to let myself get back to that place. Whether I lose control at one point in eating, I have decided that I would rather lose control more in the bulimia than I would overeating. Does that make sense? I would prefer to, if I had to choose between losing control in an area, it would be in bulimia rather than overeating. Because overeating has a trickling effect physically. And if you can get through the really down parts of bulimia, if you can pass through that sort of phase, um you will understand yourself your bodily functions your everything how your inner like body is running on a whole new level because you will gain knowledge like never before um and this isn't i'm not saying this in a way to encourage it i'm saying that this is just one more way as a woman as a person that you can really learn about who you are and what you want you you decide in your head what am I gonna choose here what are my ideals what are my beliefs what do I want out of this why am I doing this and for me the most important factor was I'm doing this because I want to stay thin I want to stay healthy and I want to look in the mirror and still be able to love myself at the end of the day. And I know because I've been on both sides that if I overeat, if I become obese, if I even gain weight, I don't feel that way about myself. But when I eat food and I decide to throw it up, I have maybe a five minute of a little bit of shame and guilt that I just did that. But you know what? Most of that comes from having to hide it. But after that, I feel like a million bucks. So I've, I've decided. And that's just it. I don't understand if you, if you would feel that way, why would you choose the alternate path? Because somebody else tells you you should? I don't care if it's medical. I don't care if it's government. I don't care if it's friends. I don't care if it's family. You have a divine right as a human being to decide for yourself. Now you also have the divine right to choose if you're going to follow people. If that's what you choose, I respect that. If you choose otherwise, I respect that. It's It goes both ways. And I at no point have claimed to be a doctor. I think I've made it very clear I'm far from that. I'm just experienced. <laughs> and sometimes, considering the lack of data we have... I, I'm willing to take this challenge on head on. I'm willing to take on this responsibility head on. And the reason for that being is there's just, I ha the experience I have goes a lot further than the data we have as a whole. That's kind of how I see it. And it could be argued, but I'm not really a debatable kind of girl. <laughs> So that being said, moving forward, um, I was going to talk about, what are we in here, 15 minutes? I was going to talk about um, food intake and what types of food and the difference that they make 
and what I do, but that might be a whole new video on its own. What was I going to talk about last time? I, I ended up remembering it after I finished the last video, but now I'm forgetting it again. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll write it down next time. If I remember it again, I'll write it down. I figure it'll just come to me at the right time for the right video. Okay, so that's all for this one. So that one was um, more of a... Uh, my experience having a child with bulimia. Um, like I said, it doesn't, the outlook is not exactly different than we'd think, but yeah. Aki, aki. Bye bye now.